And we're live and kicking from Russia. Uh, this is a second issue of Conundrum, our program with uh, Rob McKenzie, and this is Dmitry Balkovsky. Uh, I am talking to you from Moscow, and Rod is talking to you from Ufa, which is the capital of Bashkatarstan, on the very edge of uh, Siberia and uh, south from the Ural Mountains. So we are spread out geographically in Russia. And today, today we're going to talk about sanctions and how they affect uh, lives of uh, everyday Russians. But before we do, I would like to direct your attention to the unique research that Rod has just published on uh, Russian gold mining industry. If, if you are interested in investing in uh, Russian gold mining, it is a booming industry and it will continue to boom for years to come. You should really check out Rod's in-depth research, uh, lots of details. Uh, as I told you before, I've been running a gold news website for years and I can appreciate good research. So the link is in the description below. Please check it out. And now we are going to show you some footage that I have, that I have just done in Moscow several hours ago. I just walked into my uh, local supermarket and uh, uh, filmed whatever abundance or shortages we have there. So let's see what we got. And here we are, ladies and gents, again at Petrochka, federal chain of supermarkets, and we are wanting to see how did sanctions affect Russian retail. It's been a while since February 24th, so let's see what's inside and how is the availability of, of foodstuffs there. So let's see what we have here in the fruit department. We have bananas, we have got some coconuts, plums, not very good looking, but yeah. Bearable, I suppose, kiwi fruit, pineapples, grapes, persimmons, that's a season for them, and we have some grapefruit, oranges, lemons, some pears, two brands of avocado, actually 370 rubles per kilo. There is mango as well, and there is another brand of avocado, Global Village. Where does it come from? Uh, Colombia, Colombian avocados. Here we got all kinds of salamis and sausage and bologna. Here it is. And hot dogs, bacon. There is some stuff on sale. More fruit and veg, apples, pears, tomatoes of all types, cucumbers, several types of tomatoes. Lots and lots of apples. And some nuts. There'll be more nuts in different formats. Then we have fresh mushrooms, greens, all kinds, dill, scallions, and they have a small in-house bakery, so all the baked goodies and breads and all types of small cakes, bulky, what they call them in Russian, donuts, here is pirashki, stuffed bread, Central Asian stuff. And this is prepackaged bread products. 
all kinds of dough and bread and everything black bread, white bread. Here's some prepackaged cakes, and smaller cakes. Also, we do have a sweet tooth. Cakes and cakes and cakes and cakes all over. Some live beer here. Just a tiny little bit of cheese of all kinds. There is local camembert and brie. Cream cheeses. And for a nice finishing touch, there is plenty of alcohol. You know, the New Year is coming up, so lots and lots and lots of wine. And this here, and this here, and this here. There is, of course, vodka. And some fancy liquors over here. such as martinis, amaretto, and some other stuff. Chip whiskey. 379 rubles, man catcher. That's a scary name for whiskey for 379 rubles. So, you get the picture, ladies and gents. So, okay. Dima, very interesting supermarket you have. You, that must be your local one in suburban uh, scale Moscow. Indeed. Things obviously are radically different here in, uh, in Ufa, although we've got much the same uh, sort of thing, but we've got certainly certain larger supermarkets where the larger supermarkets I noticed in Moscow tend to be part of major shopping complexes, where here we've actually got smaller complexes, but big supermarkets like Ashan, which is obviously uh, French, and we've got a major Russian chain called Magnet, which goes from kind of small suburban to actually hypermarkets. And I've got uh, one of each and within 10 minutes walk of each other, which is actually quite interesting because I go and compare certain things. Some of the, the meat that you get in Oshan is great quality and good prices. Uh, but within Magnet also, there are certain things that I go there for. Uh, and the, particularly uh, the, the bakery and the, the vegetables. Uh, right, 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 right. There. Yeah, yeah, lots of people do that. You buy one thing in one shop and something um, at a market, because markets are still popular as well. Like, uh, they're usually now uh, inside a building, but still, you know, it's, uh, you want yeah. to produce and... We, we tend to uh, grow a lot of our fresh produce at the Dacha, but that's something for another program, which ah, I okay, okay, okay. love telling you about, because... Uh, uh, we have my mother-in-law and aunt who has dementia, and they spend the whole summer uh, at the dacha growing stuff, which was great for when COVID was happening. So yes. it was a great way of quarantining them. Go to the yeah. dacha, grow some food, be useful, and you won't get sick. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Same with my mom, actually. She goes, uh, as the, the, uh, the, these channels viewers know, uh, I've done a lot of footage from, from the village of Krasnaya, which is in the Ivanova region, and yeah, she bought a house there, and she spends most of the time from April to October there, yeah, 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 she does all, all the things on the on the earth, it's good for you, it's, uh, you know, it's very good. Exactly. Yeah. and people like you and I benefit from all the fresh produce that she Pre has spent her time. Precisely, yes, 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 yes. So let's just look at sanctions and uh, have they affected Russia? Well, let's look at it logically. And the answer has to be not really. No, not, not much. No, no. I mean, uh, the imposition of sanctions initially uh, by the U.S. and then joined by uh, the European Union was supposed to be some sort of shock and awe. They were supposed to 
uh, destroy the Russian economy, starting with its currency, and then obviously cut it off from the banking system. Uh, and of course, they actually had worked out that you know they were dependent on Russia for their energy supplies, and you can't just cut that off. And of course, Russia immediately uh, introduced currency controls, uh, which stopped the collapse of the of the ruble. They didn't intervene, and it did go down quite dramatically. But when they introduced the gas for rubles, uh, that stabilized the currency uh, completely and completely backfired on um, on the EU particularly. So the sanctions themselves uh, weren't really going to have a dramatic effect because Russia isn't actually dependent on the West as such. It's had eight years to get used to sanctions. The first sanctions were actually introduced in 2014. And that's cost uh, the European Union over 400 billion euros in lost trade. And that's just in foodstuffs, which account for around 30, million, 30 billion sorry, per year in lost trade from Spanish tomatoes to Danish pork to uh, pork, apples. apples to whatever. So, you know, it was never actually going to work and it was always going to backfire. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then the, the fiscally, from a fiscal point of view, Russia is doing uh, amazingly well, actually, because they have just announced, like three days ago, that um, for, for, the, for the past fiscal year, financial year, we have a uh, federal budget surplus of 140 billion rubles, which is about 2.3 billion US. It's, it's, it's not a huge sum by world standards, but it's the, the very fact that during this, all, all these, you know. Yeah, whereas if you take it into account, uh, the, uh, most countries in Europe and the US have a budget deflict. I mean, within the UK, the budget deflict is on average around 80 billion per year. In the US, it's something like 1.2 trillion. Yeah, so yeah. that puts it in perspective that there actually is a balanced budget. And not only that, uh, Russia has very limited borrowings. In fact, it has more money in its uh, arsenal, even despite the foreign exchange uh, assets being frozen, uh, than it actually owes in uh, to foreign uh, yep. bondholders. Yep, 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 for sure. The, the, the direct, like the federal debt uh, of the federal government would be in the vicinity of like, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, 35 to 40 billion US for, for the whole of Russia. Yeah. Now, the whole of Russia, it's 500 uh, billion, but, but uh, in, including the companies, are right, the, the same. The, so, the corporates. Uh, yeah, the, the, the balance of what it holds and what it owes is roughly the same. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It, it, it's, it's, no, I think, I think there, is a, there, there, it's, it's a, there is a positive there. But uh, yeah. what I'm saying is it's, uh, the rest of the sum is for Gazprom and other corporates. But like the, the, the federal government, like if you compare it to the states, uh, they yeah. crossed two trillion thresholds this year. They turned uh, the the the, yeah. the uh, size of the federal debt turned thirty trillion trillion uh, on Who's January thirty one now, Dima. Yeah, on January thirty first, and then in, in, in my month there, the 30, 31.2. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I mean, yeah. compared, and we got only forty billion. Yeah, it, so it's, it's it's sums that you can actually work out. I mean. Uh, even countries like the UK, uh, they're already over two trillion, approaching three. Uh, and with the US, it's 127 percent of GDP. Now, my background is finance. I've been a financial journalist for many, many years. And once you go over the threshold of 100 percent of your GDP in fiscal debt, then you're going to run into problems. And yep. obviously, the U.S. gets away with it because of a reserve currency and the dollar. But th there's going to come a point when that is actually not going to work for them. Yeah, 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 precisely. In more fiscally conservative times, this threshold of 100 percent debt to GDP would be uh, would ring alarm bells for countries like Mozambique or, you know, like Bolivia. Sure. And now it's the United States of America. It's amazing. Yeah. Oh, you also look at places like Japan, where uh, yeah. it's even higher. Italy, uh, its banking uh, system, 
uh, is basically like a zombie. Yep. You know, most of its debt is held by the European Central Bank. And the, that's why they are lagging behind everybody else in raising interest rates, simply because it's unsustainable. They increase the interest rates and having printed all this money, they're, they're not actually ever going to be able to pay it all back. Right, 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 right. No, no, no. It's it's a uh, it's a dead end for them. Uh, and uh, I think another sad, really sad fact: we, we we're getting the news about the uh, the midterms in the states. Uh, there is no red wave, and America is so like evenly divided, and people are still voting for Biden. Basically, voting for, voting for Democrats, they're still yeah. voting for Biden. They're acting against their own interest, I believe, and it's, it's just that, sure. uh, yeah, it's... Um, well, yeah, the problem, Dima, is the difference between Russians and uh, the, uh, the the U.S. is Russians, most Russians, including yourself, and I, I would live through it, was the 1990s. After the collapse of the Soviet Union, they saw what mass unemployment, what mass poverty and uh, massive inflation could actually do uh, to a country. And uh, we saw throughout the 90s, which were effectively a lost decade for Russia, where its whole economy literally collapsed. And it's only in the first part of the 20, uh, 21st century that Russia actually regained any level of industry and competitiveness. I mean, it's always had a major set of natural resources. But when natural resources started to move in price, I mean, when uh, the default happened in 1998, oil was $13 a barrel. Uh, in 2008, when the major uh, crisis happened, financial crisis in the world, around the world, uh, oil was $145 a barrel. So Russia had been able to replenish its war chest um, from being completely and utterly broke to, by fiscal responsibility and taking fiscally responsible uh, measures, and that's why Russia is in a great position now, where uh, as the West, using sanctions, attempts to strangle it, uh, will not succeed. Right, 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 right. No, 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 for sure, for sure. We're okay. we're quite the well other, prepared. It's okay. The it's, it's not it's not ideal or like a, like a paradise, but uh, you know. No, of course so. not. But the other thing is, uh, what most people who are watching this uh, will understand is the. Sanctions are actually only applied uh, by the EU, which is a US puppet organization, uh, Australia, Canada, which again are part of the five eyes and told what to do, and Japan. Uh, the, the bulk of uh, countries like India, China, most of Africa, Latin America, etc., are not interested in joining sanctions. And you've got countries like Saudi Arabia who've just applied to join the BRICS. Right, right. Yeah, and the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. I mean, there's a whole list of countries who are not joining sanctions and who will not join sanctions. And at the end of the day, uh, I think the, the West has actually realized that the sanctions have been a complete and utter failure. Yeah, and they, they cannot really get out of it without losing face. That's another uh, uh, th th that's another difficulty, and they're proud people, you know. They, they, they don't want to be losing face, and they don't know what to do now. Yeah, well, uh, the, the problem uh, hasn't really exacerbated itself just yet, uh, because they, they have filled their storages up because they haven't actually banned Russian gas as yet. But the problem is going to come, A, if there's a severe winter, and B, if there's not, how are they going to fill those gas storages again? You, you cannot fill gas storages up when gas is four, five, six times the price of Russian gas. That amount of gas is not available on the world market. When Europe is competing directly uh, with the Asian market for the available fuel. Right, right, right. No, no, no. They're, 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 yeah, that's, I don't know what they're thinking. Probably not thinking much, I suppose. Yeah. So, you know, uh, and all of this, uh, I mean, we noticed that uh, Sergeant Schultz of Germany went to for a quick flying visit, accompanied by most of German industry to China, and he 
from looks of the video and photographs, he wasn't exactly warmly welcomed uh, as a, a long lost European cousin to the Chinese. And I, I think he was there under duress and pressure from the German industrialists. Yeah, imagine on the plane uh, when they were yes. be saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no one, no one hears it. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I mean, uh, from what I gather from reading the German newspapers, etc., uh, is he's not exactly very popular, and his green colleagues in finance and uh, the energy sector are not particularly popular either. Uh, we only had to look at the weekend when there were thousands on the streets, tens of thousands on the streets. Yeah, everywhere in Greece cities. and yeah, yeah. No. So, you know, I can see the situation only getting worse and, you know, sanctions will continue to bite uh, and not Russia, continue to bite the West and those who introduce them. Yep, 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 yep. No, very, very unprofessional, un, uh, not, not, very, not far-sighted at all, this, uh, uh, these measures. Very silly. They, they thought... That they'd be able to 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 crush us because there is no Parmesan cheese from Italy anymore. But uh, even though there is, it still is there. It's expensive, but it, you you can buy it. But it's it's not enough, you know, to, for to topple Putin to to to, to uh, you know sure. to take away vacations and all that. Yeah, it's not uh, exactly. I mean, uh, yes, uh, there is a minority who would like uh, further integration, and you know, let's not argue with the West. Uh, but there's far, I mean, the ordinary people here in provincial Russia, like I know, um, we're quite happy with that, with the situation. I said, no, we're not going to, we actually come to the conclusion that they don't like us and never have. They were just being pleasant while they thought they could, we would be amenable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, they, they now, we can see what they're doing. We've seen what they've done with the Ukraine. We've seen what they're doing with sanctions. And, yeah, basically they want to break up Russia uh, and take it over. Yeah, 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 yeah. We actually we we, we should talk in one of the uh, one of the future programs about uh, uh, plans of breaking up Russia. It's very it's, it's quite entertaining and uh, you know it's uh, sure yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think there's actually more likelihood of uh, a breakup happening in the U.S. than there is in uh, a breakup happening in, in Russia. Or in Spain or the United Kingdom. Yeah. 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 I mean, well, the United Kingdom has always been. Uh, always been jumping up and down as a, we want independence. But every time it goes to a referendum, uh, they never win, you know. Uh, the, the Catalans in Spain, they won. But of course, uh, democracy only matters uh, in the EU when they get the democracy resu democratic right. result that they want. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, 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 you only have to look at uh, the result of the general election in uh, Hungary when um, Viktor Orban won a resounding majority. Well, no, we don't agree with that because uh, our candidate didn't win. Right, right, right. So same with the European Constitution. They were trying to, to, to yeah. push it through for years and they voted again and again. The, the people voted against it. Correct. Again and again. It's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you want democracy, but it should be very managed. I just noticed uh, a sign on your uh, polo shirt, uh, the center of, uh, for the preparation of cosmonauts. <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, uh, a friend of mine used to train cosmonauts. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Uh, he was head of training at uh, the space, the Gagarin Space Center. Space ah, okay, Center. okay. I met, yeah. I met in the 1990s. His daughter worked for me uh -huh. uh, in the 1990s. And during the troublesome times when salaries, et cetera, weren't being paid, et cetera, uh, I helped him out a fair bit when public sector employees under Yeltsin were not getting paid and right. whatever. So right, right, right. Uh, we became good friends. So uh, I've got quite a number of souvenirs from uh, the Space Centre. He's he's actually retired the uh, last couple of years. Uh -huh. but, uh, I've got a number of bits and pieces that uh, he gave to me. Uh -huh. And uh, it, it's an interesting place to go, you know. Two, two years training before you go in there. And, of course, uh, it's where all American uh, astronauts now train. 
Right, 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 right. Before right. they go into space. Do, do they still train there? Yeah, they still have, have to train uh, there because the space station, uh, they, they've now sent the first Russian cosmonaut to the, the space station by a uh, U.S. rocket, but they, all of them were trained in Russia. Ah, okay. So even now, there are, there are yeah. people training there? Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. All right. All right. And uh, all military satellites uh, of the U.S. are still sent up with uh, Russian rockets. Ah, okay. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that I know. That I know. Yes, yes, yes. So there are still lots of connections. In and uh, on the so-called energy embargo, uh, it's nuclear energy uh, isn't included in it because uh, they need to buy uh, uranium. uranium. And rich yep. uranium from Russia. Yep. So yeah, okay. they're very selective about what they put sanctions on and what suits them and what doesn't. Yes, 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 yes. They're they're, they're not uh, not as radical uh, in reality as they may want to be perceived. Really. Exactly. Yep. So uh, okay, Rod. Uh, yeah, I think it was a uh, interesting conversation today as well, and. Uh, Uh, please, uh, ladies and gents, uh, subscribe, like us, ask questions. We will answer them. Yeah. We'll even do videos on, you know, if you're asking, if, you, if you'd like us to film something, we're going to do it. So, uh, yes, please uh, send our videos to friends, share it. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. Yep. Thanks, Rob. Bye. All right.